Welcome to E3. I've been speaking on walking in the supernatural and I've drawn a very clear dichotomy between what it means to walk in the supernatural and what it means to walk in the spirit. Praise God. And I, I think that I, I don't want to leave any doubt, any confusion in that regard. Walking in the spirit has nothing necessarily to do with having paranormal experiences or extraterrestrial experiences. Obey the word, you walk in the spirit. But there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if you are in Christ Jesus, you are already in the spirit. As long as you are living by the dictates of the world, you are living in the spirit. But walking in the supernatural has the implication of having experiences that may, at our current level of understanding as human, that may transcend rational thinking and rational experience. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when you are having a clairvoyance, when you are having an out-of-body experience, when you are having um, a daylight vision, a deja vu, a dream that carries very clear and succinct meaning, these are experiences that are beyond rational, rationalization. Praise God. Praise God. Today, I promise, that I, I, I promise that I'll be speaking on the mysteries of dreams. Dreams are also evidence that the reality of our humanity transcends what we can see, what we can feel, and what we can hear, and what we can explain by scientific explanation. Even the everyday occurrence of sleep has some very deep spiritual connotation that science has not been able to provide satisfactory explanation for. Of course, there are people who believe that dream is a state where the human spirit, by a force beyond what we can explain, exudes the body. And of course, because we, 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 it, it, it's just... Yeah, the biochemical reaction that causes sleep, the physio physiological activities that causes sleep has not been able to provide satisfactory explanation of the dynamics of sleep. Of course, we know that dreams happen when you are asleep. Praise God. And like I've explained that every one of us have these experiences. It's proof that it is part of our human experience. It's part of our makeup, it's part of the reality of our humanity. Praise God. It's not proof that you are now closer to God. The fact that you had a dream that came to pass, you had a clairvoyance, you had a deja vu, you had some form of paranormal experiences, it's not proof that you are close to God because... Um, you can be an enemy of someone, and yet you still speak. Right? Praise God. You know, this is very important, so that you don't go about thinking that anybody who can get a vision for you, who can see, have a dream about you, and somehow the dream came to pass, is close to God. Paranormal experiences are not the evidence, are not the standard for measuring whether someone is close to God or not, is the degree to which you allow the written script, the written word of God, permeate your system and be a part of you, is what shows that you are close to God. After all, when Adam was having a discussion with God, it was after the fall. The, the, the documented discussion between Adam and God. I heard your voice and I was afraid. Oh, Adam, have you eaten of the fruits that thou that I had said you should not eat. Lord, the woman you gave me, that was an engagement between God and Adam. And it was happening in the state of Adam's fall. Adam was already in the state of sin when that experience happened. So the fact that someone can have an engagement with God, have a discussion with God, is not proof that, oh, he is close to God. I'm saying this so you don't, because the man saw a vision, or the woman saw a dream or a vision, you submit your life to, to him or her to dictate how you should live your life. Because I know a lot of people who, they practically depend on pastors to give them directions in life. 
Praise God. Pastors or native doctors, actually. Fortunately, we are in a world today where a lot of native doctors are now wearing suits. Praise God. And you know, if you follow some of the things I've said, you can actually have a, a repeat, a learning and mastering of these extraterrestrial experiences, of these supernatural experiences in your daily affair. You can. It's something that can be learned. Praise God. Praise God. And actually, the deliberate mastering of some of those paranormal experience in the human dimension, the deliberate mastering is in the class of witchcraft. That's what witchcraft is about. And that's why Paul classified it as a work of the flesh. Praise God. Particularly when it is mastered in a bid to manipulate others and exert negative forces on other people. Human beings are powerful, actually. Praise God. So dreams are a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that occur involuntarily in your dream, in your mind when you are sleep, sleeping. The dreams give credence to the supernatural nature of our humanity. They could be a manifestation of our deepest desires, anxieties, emotions, and Relating to repressed childhood memories. Many of the funny, funny dreams some of us have, actually, when you sit down and critically analyze them, it's a replay of our childhood memories. Physiologically, the body state is analyzed by the mind and interpreted in dreams. Stimulus stimulates dreams. And the stimuluses could be auditory or tactory or tactile stimuluses. Of course, you know that um, auditory dreams are very rare. Dreams that you are hearing voices are very rare. Most times, dreams happen as pictures. That's why it is said that people who are blind from birth, they don't experience visual dreams. They don't. Because usually, your visual dreams are a replay of all the things that your mind has stored. There, there are patterns and, and, and sequence. You know, I'm sure... Praise God. How many of you have ever shopped on Amazon or Jumia? You know, science has had a way of replaying some of this and down natural reality for in dimension of artificial intelligence. I'm sure you know if you buy one thing from Amazon, um, the next time you go online to Amazon, it will show you other Items that may be relevant to you, uh, they use complex algorithms to develop that. Usually what happens is that uh, if I buy a book on faith, what they do is that they connect people who bought books, on that people who other items they bought. Because it may be that people who bought books on faith may have similar patterns with you, Similar interests with you, similar relationships with you. So what they do is, on the basis of you buying a book on faith, they show you other items that may have been bought by people who bought books on faith. And usually, when you look at those items, you see the correlations. Praise God. So usually, that's how it happens in your, in your dreams, too. There are correlations. There are patterns that your mind connects What are the things that causes dream? Three, physical stimulus, subconscious mental associations, and subconscious imagination. Your dreams could be unconscious wish fulfillment, things you fantasize about, things you've dreamt about. You see, you see yourself in a dream, living them. I'm sure many of you have had those kind of dreams. Memories that are formed throughout the day, replaying. When your mind is at rest. You know, usually when you are sleeping, your body is at rest, your, your mind is very active. So, and uh, the restrictions founded on logic that is placed on your mind are no longer at play. That's why your dreams can be very weird sometimes. They can just, it's like the mind is free to think. 
That's why you see yourself flying in a dream. Praise God. And you know, the problem we've had in our lives, especially us Africans, and really not just Africans everywhere, is that we, we conflict different worldviews in our interpretation of dreams. So I'm born again, I'm a Christian, and I have a dream about something. Maybe I'm flying, and I'm using an Owegbe uh, interpretation of flying in the dream to interpret my own dream. Praise God. No, no, it creates complications. That's why we see our believers who still run around on, because of their concern for the kind of dreams they had. If you, you, you had a dream eating, you must explain to your mom what that means. Where and where you have been in the last couple of months, who you have eaten food from. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 5.3. For dream cometh through the multitude of business. And a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. That's a very clear scripture, right? That dreams come through the multitude of business. Through the multitude of activities you, you engage in, the, the, the brain finds patterns and reconnect them, and you start having dreams. There are some dreams that are common to everyone that I like to just highlight so that when you have such dreams, it's not... And like I've said in the past, a lot of dreams are actually communications with self. Praise God. I've mentioned three causes of dream. I've talked about external stimulus I've, I've talked about subconscious mentalization and, and subconscious imagination. There is the superconscious dream, which is dreams that are given to you that are telepathic in nature, clairvoyant in nature. Those are the dreams we call revelational dreams. Clear, direct revelations. Praise God. And these are evidence that the supernatural is part of your natural essence. Falling dreams is very common. So when you see yourself in a dream that you are falling, you don't really need to be afraid. How many of you have ever had a dream? I think everybody. You've never had a dream. If you have never had a dream that you were falling either from a cliff or from something, you've never had a dream. Okay, if you have had a dream, can I see your hand? Everybody's had a dream. It's a common, it's a common dream. So uh, usually a lot of falling dreams are product of external stimulus. For example, if you are sleeping and you suddenly roll to the edge of your bed and part of your body comes out and in, your body will send a signal to you that you are about falling. And usually those signals come by way of a dream, uh, that you are on a cliff and you are falling. Uh, when you are younger, you actually fall and you land on the ground and you wake up, Right? How many of you ever fell from your bed and before you fell, you saw that you were, you were in a cliff about falling? Praise God. Now, that is evidence to you that those are not the kind of dreams that should make you scared. Praise God. Let me say this funny one. For those of you, for, for many of you when you were young, maybe, I don't know, maybe, I, for men, I think it's, it's, I think men suffer it more. I don't know about women. Um, maybe we, before you are six years old and uh, you into the toilet full and you need to use, what usually happen? In your dream, you see yourself going to the toilet <laughs> and you are weeping thoroughly only for you to wake up, see that you have soaked the old bed and praise God. So your bladder is full and it sends a signal to your brain that you need to. And guess what? For those who how do you take control of those kind of stimulus, those kind of dream? After a while, as you grow older, you associate the fact that you need to, you, you will be urinating on yourself if you are not careful whenever you are in that dream. So what do people do? Those, as they get older, they activate themselves to awake from that sleep so they can quickly And you know, in between that age where you are taking control of your dream, what usually happens? Maybe by the time you activate yourself and you are waking, the, the, the urine has started coming out and some of them has poured on the bed before you, you get to. 
people urinate, they, they always see themselves, they are in the toilet urinating. Shh. Only for them to wake up and they are wondering what's wrong with them. That's just a clear case of how dreams happen. Praise God. So there are, there are common dreams you should not worry yourself about. Flying dreams. How many of you have ever dreamed that you're flying? I know many of you will not want to say now because <laughs> I will just, some of you will just pass. Say, okay, okay, okay. Especially sisters, so that the brother that was tripping for you will not say, ah, you dreamt that you were flying, huh? <laughs> we know, we know, we know, we know. Uh, so say, beneath people. <laughs> Praise God. A lot of the flying dreams you have happens when um, physiologically, the, the, the physiological explanation for flying dreams is when you sleep on one part of your body for a very long time and you start losing sensation. You start... Uh, how do I explain that now? Do you know if you put your foot or something on the ground for a long time, the, the blood vessels in that place constrict and you start losing feeling, Right? So when you lie down on one part of your body for a very long time, the blood vessels there leaves. For example, if you put pressure on your leg for a very long time and the blood vessels constrict, when you raise it, you start having piercing sign, right? Am I talking to myself? Or, um, you start having it as if you have needles all over your legs. Why? Because the blood is trying to pump back into those veins that have retracted. Usually when you lie down on one part of your body for a very long time, and the blood vessels move, you are no longer feeling sensation in that part of your body. So when you are not feeling sensation, what does it do to you? It sends a signal to you that you are no longer standing on anything. So you see yourself flying in the air. Talk true. Okay, if you have never seen yourself flying in the air, it's, it's, it's a very common dream. Yeah, it may not be everybody, but it's a very common dream. You see yourself flying. I, I know that there are other ex dreams that um, you see yourself flying and that carries other connotations, but these are very common dreams that a lot of people experience. It's, it's founded on external stimulus, majorly. Praise God. There are those that see themselves naked in their dream, especially in a public place. Praise God. <laughs> Maybe you just go to class and you are naked. <laughs> or you enter a church and you are naked. <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> Praise God. It's another type of common dreams. It's a very, it's a, it's, it, when I mean common, it's almost everybody experiences those kind of dreams. Most times, <laughs> you know, most times when you have naked dreams is um, maybe the, co the, cl the clothing you are using has pulled off your body. Your, your bed sheet has fallen away from your body. And the body feels the sensation maybe of coldness and all that and you see yourself in your bed suit. Adam's skin. <laughs> dreams have not been able to escape from some beast or person pursuing you. That's very common. Everybody has had that. At least that one I know. Where one man is, maybe we could last, he's pursuing you, he's pursuing you, he's pursuing you, he's pursuing you. And you are trying to escape. The more you try to escape, the more he gets closer. You are trying to escape, but you are not going anywhere. That's another very common dream. You know, one of the common trends in that is, um, for example, when you sleep with your body, convoluted or coiled in a manner that is not healthy for your limbs. Maybe you squeeze your leg in a manner and blood is no longer flowing to the extremities. Usually when you wake up from dreams, you are trying to escape from danger. You see yourself struggling on the bed, right? The, tr the truth is that you are trying to stretch your limbs so that blood can flow properly. So the, the mind sends you to you as, they want kill, they want catch you, they want escape, escape. And you start seeing yourself stretching, stretching, stretching. For many that are much younger, the wisdom they get to escape all those kind of dreams that is to inculcate a deliberate, conscious uh, 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 will to make sure that their legs are stretched out when they are sleeping. Isn't that true? 
When your legs are stretched out when you are sleeping and anything and somebody is pursuing your dream, you just see yourself. When, when you move one step, it's like you are moving 100 steps and you escape from the person. You know, the various parts of the body have various responses. They receive various stimuli that send signal to your brain when you're sleeping and they come to you as dreams. That's why somebody can be playing music in another part of the company. You are hearing it in your sleep and you find yourself either in a concert or in a clubhouse or in a, in a place where music is being played. Right? You're familiar with that. Praise God. Dreams of being drawn irresistibly to some dangerous places. Dreams that some wishes are being gratified. Dreams of being about to go on a journey and being unable to get your things. Or you are, you are writing an exam and you just realize that you are not prepared for the exam. You come into an exam hall, no biro, no pencil, nothing to write the exam. You come into an exam hall, the language of the exam script is different from the language you are familiar with. <laughs> Have any of you heard about those kind of dreams? It will just be disturbing you. Praise God. These are very common dreams that I, I would pray that when you have them, it should not be anything that will make you panic. And like I've said before, dreams are communications with yourself to a large degree. They are communications with yourself. Um, that's why when you have a dream, the first thing you should think is think inwards. Our lack of understanding of the imagery of dreams is what creates panic when, whenever we have dreams. The majority of dreams leave us with feeling of fear. Now, as physical stimulus elicit dreams, like the ones I've explained, so are psychological and emotional states of mind. When there is an imbalance in your body frame, you could have dreams that are inexplainable. When you are suffering from anxiety, you have dreams. You have serious dreams. Sometimes some of the dreams in those state of mind are also reflected by the common ones I've just said. Someone who's suffering from anxiety may actually see himself falling, falling from a cliff. Praise God. These are just common thread in dreams. They are evidence of the supernatural nature of the human person. There is a superconscious dream that you, we've had situations where um, there was one I read about where the man had a dream several months about a crime scene. And when the crime really happened, on the basis of the people he identified in the dream, they were picked and the crime was unraveled. I've shared the experience of how a brother of mine once told me how he has just joined a confraternity in my dreams. And it was very true. Praise God. I had a friend, he's a pastor like me, one of our churches. In, sometime in 1995, I had a dream that he was telling me that he was going to get married to another of our sister. And in 2005, they actually got married, 10 years later. And I told him about that dream. Even though he started using that dream as a basis to tell the sister that, you see, God has confirmed it, that even Osas told me that, he saw it in his dream. You, you understand? So you can actually have those kind of dreams that are very clear, revelational dreams. That God is sending an information to you. But usually, even when dreams come to you as revelational dreams, if you do not understand patterns, you don't understand how dreams work, and how to interpret dreams, they will, they will just bewilder you and, and it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. Praise God. I had a dream that somebody was taking my money to another bank, and I got an understanding of that dream, and that dream gave me money several, over a year later. I've shared that story many times here. Praise God. I had a dream that someone was, a snake was trying to bite me, and I knew that the transaction I was involved in was deceitful, and it was fraudulent. 
So I, I, I woke up and told my friends and colleagues that mm, that transaction is struggling. Let's not do it. Some of them put their money and they never found that money till today. So you must have an understanding of how dreams work. They are internal communication to ourselves. The majority of dreams are not a signal of impending danger. They may just be reflection of internal states of mind. Praise God. Are we here today? Let's read Genesis 20 verse 6. Genesis 20 verse 6. And God said to him in a dream. So God can actually speak to you in a dream. Yes, I know that, that. I think that's just the line I just want. God said to him in a dream. So God can actually speak to you in a dream. But it's not all your dream you should be trying to understand what God is saying. Matthew 27 verse 19. Matthew 27 verse 19. And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. I think that was Pilate, right? Say, look, 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 look. The kind of dream I had this night, I beg, don't put your hand in this man's death. Don't put your hand in this man's death. It's a signal that this man... They are just trying to frame him up. Praise God. Numbers 12, 6. Numbers 12, 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak unto him in a dream. The Lord doth speak in a dream. Praise God. Jeremiah 29, 8. And he said, and thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophet or your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, either neither hearken to your, to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. Praise God. The implication of that scripture is that you can actually instigate a dream. You can actually instigate a dream. How many of you ever had a dream you woke up from, you were not happy that you didn't finish the dream, and when you slept again, the dream came back. Praise God. Am I the only one that has this kind of experience? You, you didn't enjoy the fact that, ah, that dream, maybe it's a fulfillment of a fantasy that you've had or something. I said, no, 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 I beg. I need to finish that dream off. Especially the one that somebody is giving you money and just wake up. When he's about to put the money in your hand, you just wake up. Say, ah, I must collect that money. For the younger ones, how many times did you dream that somebody gave you money? You held it. When you woke up, you are only just clenching, clenching your fist and nothing was there. You feel it. So when I was young, I used to have that kind of dream. I put money in my hand. I would just, ah, hold it tight. Only for you to wake up, you are only just doing your fist like this. Nothing is inside. Very depressing kind of dream. So the implication of the scripture is that you can actually instigate a dream. And many people did. In fact, I believe that Daniel had such experience. Where he had to, by any means, instigate the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Because Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar told him that, look, I'm not going to tell you my dream. You need to go and tell, tell me your dream. Tell me my dream and tell me the meaning. That, that man must be very wicked. Praise God. Genesis 45 and 9. Genesis 45 and 9. And the dream, the dream, both of them, each, of, each man, of course, this speaks about the prisoners in, on, in, when Joseph was in the, in the prison. And they dreamed a dream, and Joseph gave them interpretation to those dreams, and those dreams came to pass as was stated. Genesis 37 verse 6. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. That's Joseph speaking to his brothers. And we know that Joseph's dream came to pass exactly as he has said it. How many of you have ever had a dream that came to pass exactly as, as it was stated? A lot of people. In fact, almost everybody. 
Even my son once told me, he had one dream that I think I was being taken away from him and he was crying. I told him, you know you are going to a boarding school. <laughs> in that boarding school, the emotion you felt in that dream will come to bear. And when we went to school, I, I, you know, I, I, I saw him, when we go and visit him on those visiting days, when we are leaving, ah, there was one of those days, he said, Daddy, he was crying. You know, he tried to form like he's a hard man. He said, Daddy, take me out of here. This place is not suited for me. I, I felt the emotion. And he had forgotten that he had a dream <laughs> that told him that his father was being taken away from him. And he was crying and panicking in the dream. <laughs> Praise God. You know, some of those dreams are just your body and your sixth sense telling you what is going to happen. That's a superconscious dream. That's God speaking to you in a dream. I, I, you know, when I use the word God speaking to you, it's as if God single you out to give you a revelation. No, the Bible says that in, in Daniel, that, oh, your mind wandered into the future in your dream, and you start thinking, what is likely to happen in the future? And you started having pictures. And those pictures were very direct revelations of what the future holds. So you can instigate a dream, right? Praise God. Daniel 2, verse 3. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Um, I really want to know the meaning of the dream. I really want to know the meaning of the dream. Job 7, verse 14. You can read most of those, Daniel, and you'll see a lot of things said there. Praise God. <laughs> Job was complaining. He said, thou, then thou scariest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions. How many of you have ever been scared because of a dream? Praise God. Sometimes when you dream that a witch is flying in your room, it's just that you have some, mus some big, big cockroaches buzzing in the room. And if you are, your mind has been so, so primed to suspect every flying object as a witch, you will see it as a witch in your dream. Praise God. That's why I encourage people to make sure they are living quarters. Their sleeping environment is clean. Because if it's not clean, also it can elicit dreams. It can elicit dreams that are not pleasant. Praise God. Genesis 31, 11. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me in a dream. Praise God. The angel of the Lord spake unto me in a dream. Verse 24 of that same book. Verse 24. And God came to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night. Praise God. You know, there were times God also came to Herod in a dream, instructing him to take the child and escape, right? So God can actually speak to you in a dream, can give you revelations in a dream. Um, Job 33, verse 15. Job 33, 15. In a dream, in the vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings and upon the bed. Um, you can go and read that scripture so you understand the context Job was speaking. Matthew, verse, Matthew 2, 19. 12 and 19. Matthew chapter 2, verse 12 and 19. Matthew chapter 2, verse 12 and 19. And being one of God in the dream, that he should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country. Another way, verse, verse 19. Verse 19. And when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph. You know, in those days, there was no telephone, there was no GSM, there was no television. So, he's in Egypt, completely oblivious of what was happening. But when Pharaoh died, an angel told him that Pharaoh was dead. Pharaoh was dead. I, let's read Judges 7, verse 13. Then 1 Kings 3, 5, and 15. Judges 7, verse 13. 1 Kings 3, 5, and 15. 
And when Gideon was come, behold, a man that told him a dream, told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, let's just go to 1 Kings 3, verse 5 and 15. 1 Kings 3, 5, and Gideon appeared, and Gibeon, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give thee, you know. God appeared to Solomon at night and asked Solomon to ask him anything. It was in the dream, verse 15. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up whatever. So it was really a dream that the Lord, it was not like God stood by an angel before Solomon to tell him what he wanted. There's a scripture that I'm, I was actually looking for that says that there is emptiness in the multitude of dreams. Praise God. That means your dream, the multitude of your dream are not what should give you fear. Because in the multitude of dreams, there are many emptiness. So you should not pattern your life after dreams until you have a very clear understanding of how to interpret your dreams or what dreams mean. A dream that you do not understand should not give you sleepless nights. Praise God. Praise God. In the New Testament, we, are not walked, we don't walk by sight. Sight could be what you dreamt about. If you have an understanding of the interpretation of dream, it's different. If you do not have an understanding, then don't have sleepless nights by reason of that. You know, in growing up, my mom was very highly sensitive to dreams. And unfortunately, many of the dreams people have, they are dreams that scares them. So just imagine that you are very sensitive to dream, and all the dreams you keep having are all scary dreams. So I, I grew up early enough to know that when I have those dreams, I should disregard them. If God wants to give me a revelation, he gives me a very clear understanding of the dream. And the Archbishop used to tell us that if you have a dream you don't understand, wake up, turn your bed upside down, lay it again. Maybe there are too many dust on the side of the bed you're lying on. Lay it again so you can have a sound sleep. Praise God. You can stimulate, you can instigate a dream. You can understand. There are a lot of books written about dreams. Sigmund Field wrote one on the interpretation of dreams. You can get it. Don't use witchcraft's interpretation for the dream of a believer. Don't use Olokun worshippers' interpretation for the dream of a believer. If you are a believer, you are founded on God's word. If you have a dream that you are swimming in a river, it's not a proof that you have water spirit or or mommy was our spirit. That's many ways many believers have confused themselves and subjected themselves to the conflict of dream interpretation. The fact that you dream that you are eating the food in the I've, I've told you guys that before that you are eating food at the dream is not evidence that you are now a witch. So the interpretation you give to your dream must be founded on biblical principles. Must be founded on biblical principles. The interpretation you give to animals in your dream must be founded on the biblical understanding of what those animals stand for. Praise God. That way you will give yourself peace. The fact that you are dreaming and you're seeing people, your dead relatives in your dream, is not evidence that you are dying soon. I'm sure many of you have had those dreams. Oh, I saw my dead father. I saw, saw my dead mother. It's not proof that you are dying soon. It's just, um, it may just be a simple meaning that there's something in your past that you are not letting go. You need to let go. Most times, your dreams are a communication with self. Your body is trying to tell, give you an information. Your body is trying to tell you the state of your mind is like this. The state of your... That's why even in the hospital, when people have high fever, when, when it's been diagnosed, they ask you, do you have nightmares? Do you have bad dreams? Because when the, os the, the, the osmotic balance or hormonal balance in the body is not in place, it can give you all manner of signal in your body. Anyhow, dreams are evidence that the supernatural are part of our natural reality. They are the evidence... 
but our life will not be founded and directed on dreams that we do not understand. Just like even, even a seer and a witch doctor can actually give me a revelation based on his, his dream or his vision, and I denounce it and reject it, and nothing happens. God's word is superior to any vision, any dream from anybody, including yourself. So you must develop yourself to that point. You know, one of the ways, a lot of people don't know that you can actually have control over your dream. You can actually have control over your dream. There was a time in my life I was a victim of horrendous harassment in my dream. It was very common. There was almost no day, no week. You won't have a dream. Somebody's trying to cut your neck. Somebody's trying to kill you. And, you know, those dreams send day like chills to your body. And I began to develop myself based on the word. I began to use scriptures like no weapon form against me prospers. I began to develop myself in the word and let it sink into my deepest subconscious mind that truly no weapon form against me shall prosper. So when that became very deep, deeply rooted in me, when I dream and somebody is holding a cutlass before me and is, is trying to run after me, I say, oh, really? No weapon form. I know this is a dream. Have you ever dreamt in a dream and you're telling yourself, I know I'm dreaming? Praise God. Why? You are trying to align your physical stimulus, that your dream, that is interpreted to you as a dream, with your conscious understanding of how things work. So if somebody is coming after you, you say, I know this is a dream, but by the way, I know that no weapon form against me shall prosper. Let me see what you can do. And do you know that when you have those kind of dreams and people are pursuing you, animals are pursuing you, and you stand and say, let me see what you can do, you know that that person will disappear. At the time in my life, I was the one that is now constantly pursuing people in my dreams. There was a time people used to pursue me in my dreams, and when I was younger, you would cry out of your dream, and your mom would start suspecting that you have some, there is some spirit that is at you. You know, I used to go and ask my pastors those days, Pastor, is it possible to be possessed and not know it because they told me that I was possessed? Because of all those funny, funny experiences. But as I began to grow in the world, as I began to read the world and let it permeate my system and sink into my subconscious being, I saw that I was now controlling many of the affairs of my dream. Praise God. Praise God. Imagine me that can run after snakes and catch them in daylight. Imagine if I see a snake like a python in my dream. Do you think I'll be scared? I'll see it as a pet. Praise God. Praise God. So you must develop yourself to that point in your life where the word of God has become so ingrained, ingrained in your system that it regulates the affairs of your dream. And it is possible. And that is how, that is how, that is how you instigate a dream. Praise God. That is how you instigate a dream. I've told you before, some of the ways you can enhance the, the, the operations of the supernatural in your life is through prayers, meditations, fastings. Praise God. And you know, many times, we undermine the place of meditation in it. You know, when you meditate, what you are actually doing, you are sending signal to your subconscious mind. You are letting it embed, and in your dreams, they play out. They play out. Praise God. Imagine a man that has so filled himself with the world and he finds himself in an ocean. He will find himself in a boat in that ocean. The ocean, there may be waves, but he's flying over it. Praise God. For the righteous shall mount up with wings like eagle. You must learn to control and influence the affairs of your dream. Don't be running up and down because a, a dog was trying to bite you in your dream. Oh, you saw yourself in class. You couldn't write the exam. For people who, who have apprehension over uh, failing, 
that you can actually see yourself in, in a class. And you know, those kind of things to get you to go and prepare for that exam or whatever life challenge that you're faced with. Let today be the last time you ever have a dream and wake up afraid. Are you here today, please? If that's all this message can achieve, I'm okay. Let today, you will tell yourself, today is the last time I have a dream and wake up afraid. And from now, you must learn the skill of influencing the content of your dream. And one of the ways you can do that is fill your heart with the right words. Fill your heart with the right words. Fill your subconscious mind with the right words. So even when your body is at rest, it plays out. It plays out. Praise God. It plays out. From time immemorial, God has always revealed the secrets of men to people through dreams. From time immemorial, in dreams. And that can be your experience. The reason why I'm doing this teaching is that you don't need me to give you revelations. You can do it for yourself. You can do it for yourself. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Jesus.